सही है सो कंटिन्यूंग विद क्वेश्चन सेवन अ सोसाइटी सेज इट केयर्स अबाउट इफिशंसी Uh, a, a society that says it cares about efficiency needs to abandon the notion of a market system to to allocate resources so it needs to abandon the market system uh, and because markets only sell serve self interest they are never efficient discuss whether this opinion is supported by economic analysis so i think the question basically is uh it are uh, are markets efficient uh, with links to economic analysis right ha uh, ha huh. okay so how would you start this would you start this with talking about efficiency or, or the market i would say generally efficiency hoti kya and then uh, divide it into productive or allocative wagaira so okay there would for aram se here i would talk about markets ke bare mein मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर में किस तरह एलोकेशन uh, होती है क्या so, होता है सो सो वी विल गेट टू दैट um but yeah so we start off with we, normally it's wise to start off uh, with what you think is the theme of the question and i think yes you're right the theme is about efficiency so you uh, start off uh, you know you you ex- you need to explain what efficiency is and I don't. Is there a one-liner we can give for efficiency in general, or is the only way we can explain it by dividing it? Yeah, I think I saw it Google से कहीं लोगों में देखा. I think I have seen it once. पहले कभी के किसी को लेके कैसे लेके. Rotten maybe I have it. Okay. Um. But here. Uh. But when you are explaining efficiency, uh. uh the point here is you're going to divide it into productive efficiency um and allocative efficiency so yeah and you will define productive efficiency uh for well again it, 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 the definitions and the ideas are slightly different for economies and um for firms i think since we're talking about firms we'll talk about uh, so we talk about markets we'll mainly talk about firms right ha but usme we can talk about generally thoda bahut ki ha puri economy mein kis tarah se allocation aap productive efficiency kis tarah reach kar sakte ho okay so so you can you know refer to what is meant by productive efficiency in an economy uh, because in an economy basically the idea is that you're you know you're not wasting resources so you're operating on your potential uh, operating at potential or on your ppc so there's full employment there's zero wastage of resources so that's for the economy and you can refer to that but when you're talking about markets and how markets are made up of firms for an individual firm uh, it would be basically producing at minimum average cost and for the market i suppose is where you know uh, the a lot of firms are doing so uh and if you want you could explain this very simply by a diagram um where you have cost um you have let's say output and you have the firms whatever you could show you the srac for example the idea is this particular output would be uh your Uh, you know the output that where you are productively efficient alternatively you could give a slightly more mature diagram for this depending on you know it's a 25 mark mark question so you might as well um i can use a, the diagram of a monopoly uh, you know just whatever works or mon- or that of monopolistic competition uh, so you have price you have quantity you have demand which is ar um sorry you have uh, mr You have MC, and you have your let's say your average, um, your average cost curve, uh, and the idea is wherever MC cuts AC, because uh, the the relationship between the marginal and the average is that if marginal is below average, average will fall. If marginal is above average, average will rise. So where it's cutting it, that's where average is minimum. So this particular output Q. uh is you know the output where you are productively efficient uh, you could also sh- all, all show this to a monop- 
a, a diagram of you know perfect combination whatever the idea here is not to debate just to show it would be biased to introduce this diagram here because like they're talking about markets so generally assumed to be uh, assume them to be perfectly competitive okay so uh, so basically the idea here is um this particular diagram you need not introduce at this time even if something as simple as this this one might work because whether or not you're uh, efficient uh, would depend on the market dynamics which is something we'll talk about later so you know maybe leave that leave this for later on uh okay we said i did get a definition and i wrote here it's okay. like a resource being utilized in a more optimal manner that serves each individual without uh, with minimi minimizing inefficiency in process so basically i so like is it generally the same thing yeah optimal manner uh, you know you're minimizing efficiency uh, minimizing inefficiencies and also on um say so, yeah, so you you said this about productive efficiency and again because it's a 25 mark answer and because you want to add a bit and distinguish yourself from other people you can talk about x efficiency which sharia will explain acha so x efficiency is the general idea where you generally produce more than what you should have had produced at your lower cost but you do it at higher cost because of organizational slack in the uh, firms which is generally due to either lack of competition ya fir just you know slack generally yeah so uh, understand that uh, x efficiency is a part is a subset of productive efficiency right mm -hmm. yeah so uh, it is a part of productive efficiency hum koi third new efficiency nahi ki nahi baat kare but what the idea here is even in like perfect competition or you know or no maybe you know perfect competition but when you're talking about productive efficiency uh even like whether or not depending on your output here is where you want to be producing that is minimum ac but you could potentially be producing on basis like this right however if you have slack and all you may even be producing above this so you may be producing uh optimal output but because of slack you're and because of that you're really not going for profit maximization if you're just satisfying profits you could be producing at this point let's say um you, so you basically what's happened what's happened then uh is because of slack and all you're even at the particular optimal output you're still not as efficient as you could be um and that results uh, the reason for that is lack of competition so lack of incentive to be that organized um so that's where x efficiency links in something nice you can show the examiner um then you can talk about allocative so for a uh, an economy allocative efficiency refers to the idea i mean you are allocatively efficient where no further redistribution uh, you know of resources can make someone better off without making someone worse off so it kind of links to where to position yourself on the ppc however for the intents of this answer uh, and for a firm uh, allocative efficiency is marginal cost pricing and you have to explain this a bit because this is where the sum of producer and consumer surplus is maximum uh, you don't have to go into the too much detail about how it's maximum uh, but the I, but you do need to let them know and because you know this that's how you can link to how allocative efficiency is basically you know the uh, refers to the allocation of resources in a manner you know that is optimal for society um because uh, when you're talking about producer and consumer surplus dono ka sum humne maximize kiya to society ke liye benefit is uh, maximized uh, again if you link back to deadweight loss where Uh, producer and consumer dono ka ka surplus kam hota tha that was you know not just it was lost to them it was also lost to society as well uh, you know beneficial for society or beneficial or optimal for society so yeah so you start off with that you explain you basically explained what efficiency is uh, then you go back to the question just to ensure uh, and now i believe you start to talk about markets yeah.
Okay. What is the market? Uh, virtual place where there is interaction between the place people who demand a product and with who is supply a product. Okay. Okay. So basically where consumers and uh, producers would interact and with relevance here, uh, you can say that the market mechanism is an allocative mechanism which uses price. which uses the price mechanism so basically it's allocating where demand is equals to supply so at your equilibrium if you want, if you want, you could just draw a very very basic demand supply diagram just to show what a market looks like. Uh, I would also add price mechanism ke functions price ke hote ke mein thoda sa taake taake um, Do you think we like because they specifically mentioned market, so I won't go into that detail, mm -hmm. but I just say that price ke ye ye hote hain, usse ye ye fayda mara ho sakta hai. Bas. Okay, so uh, the could you elaborate on those mechanisms? Achha, so signaling uh, incentive and uh, it's rationing. Signal most important wala is rationing. Because like, usse you can link it to more allocatively uh, allocative efficiency. Signaling is bahar chalo profit banane ke liye zaba they produce where people are demanding yeah. higher etc. But uh, rationing is more. I think sig signaling mehi uh, incentive profit incentive aaja tha I believe right. Hmm. Ah, true. Um, so, what these functions basically do, they help you allocate resources. Like rationing with the idea is okay if you have scarce resources, if there's scarcity, if there's shortage, then you increase price uh, to cut uh, to cut back quantity demanded and hence increase quantity supplied. Signaling is more of where higher prices act as a signal to producers to shift resources to that particular product and hence produce that, right? Um, both of these things help in the allocation. Uh, and what all of this basically links back to uh, is the basic idea of how markets allocate on the basis of, um, what do you say? Uh, well, demand and supply, which we will now link to pri costs and benefits, uh, private costs. Okay. so. The idea from here, from now on, is well, it's, again, it's a long answer, it's a 25 marker. Uh, so, you will first talk about how these markets could be efficient, because there's less stuff on that. Then, you'll talk about how markets could not be efficient, which is a pretty easy thing to write. So, you basically write a lot about market failure, basically, there. Um, but on the first slide, let's talk about how they could be efficient. And just a small correction, which I've already clarified. So this particular diagram, don't draw it at the start. Just draw a sim very simple one, uh, because these diagrams uh, would help us more later on when we're actually talking about whether or not markets are efficient. Or you could just draw the same diagram twice. Like it doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah. So how are they efficient? How or how they can be efficient? So. The reality is they're really going to be productively and allocatively efficient when you have perfect competition. So when that theoretical model does work out, so when there are, let's say, zero barriers to entry and zero costs of exiting, when you have lots of firms, you have almost homogenous products and cost structures, stuff of that, and like, you know, where, where firms are just price, um, uh, takers. Oh, takers. takers yes um, so maybe just explain a bit using the stuff that I just told you about what perfect competition is but what the main crux here is because again they're not too interested in you flaunting off that you know the features of perfect competition they're interested in seeing how a market could be efficient and you said in perfect competition they could be efficient because there is product productive Efficiency, which is as we've discussed, is where you produce at excuse the handwriting at minimum AC 
perfect competition diagram comes in your demand curve is perfectly elastic which you can also be called your ar curve which you can also call your mr curve in this case because it's just just horizontal so the addition just with it like i had to also draw market ka diagram iske sath hi taaki main bol da dun ke wage uh, wage ke price price any nee, i would draw like jo market ka diagram ke sath hi where you show ke how you take the price from the market na okay you know, price okay okay so so similar to what happens in like basically your wage diagrams ha huh. Uh, ideas market say demand and supply say you get a particular price which is then um well it's easy if you draw them side by side which is then given to the individual firm for the individual firm it's a demand uh, and again the individual firm is just a price taker right it can't really influence price uh so the demand curve is horizontal demand is equal to average revenue is also equal to marginal revenue because it's horizontal so you're just selling more units at the particular uh uh price so you have your mc and profit maximization theory states that you should produce where mc is equal to mr understand the in perfect competition you can basically sell as much as you want at that particular price so the firm would definitely want to sell quantity q the reason why it is efficient is because if you remember इधर आप एवरेज कॉस्ट कर पाता था अगेन इट्स मिनिमम वेयर दिस इज इट्स मिनिमम पॉइंट बिकॉज दैट्स वेयर एम सी कट्स इट सो ऑल दो दर्म आई डोंट थिंक गिव्स टू हुट्स वेदर आर नॉट इज प्रोडक्टिवली इफिशियंट इट्स वरिंग अबाउट एम सी एंड एम आर बट वन इट डज वेरी अबाउट एम सी एंड एम आर बिकॉज ऑफ दिस द वेरी नेचर ऑफ परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन इट ऑल्सो इन्श्योर दैट इट इज प्रोडक्टिवली इफिशियंट एंड इट प्रोड्यूस दैट इट्स मिनिमम एवरेज कॉस्ट सो यू शो हैंस टॉक अबाउट के कब शुरू में लाइक प्रॉफिट होता भी है वो तब भी लॉन्ग रन में जाके इधर ही आना होता है या समथिंग ऑफ दैट सॉर्ट वेल आई डोंट थिंक इतनी डेप्थ इज रिक्वायर्ड बट यू कुड थ्रू डायग्रामेटिकल एनालिसिस सो डेफिनेटली नॉट बट यू कुड से दैट इवन इफ अ फर्म यू नो हैज सुपर नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट्स इन द शॉर्ट रन और लॉसेस इन द शॉर्ट रन इन द लॉन्ग रन यू विल जस्ट हैव नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट्स वेयर एसी is equals to ar which is basically the point that we've shown because super normal profits will get diluted uh, as as new firms move into the market because of zero barriers to entry and so i think you could give a few lines about this but not you know how to show di show diagrammatically uh it's a 25 marker but i think usme kuch zyada dher lag jayegi um so yeah then you show ke how these firms ji Ah, allocated. So yeah, allocatively efficient. So yeah, and we remember that this is where price is equals to M C. Draw a diagram. Uh, I'm not drawing a, a one again. How how it gets it gets its price from. Uh, क्या कहते हैं? From the market, it मैं एक दफा बना दिया. I don't think it's needed anyway. The whole bad idea now. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, the firm will produce till MC is equals to MR because I, again, and you might want to add a few lines. I think I don't think we did. You might want to add a few lines when we talk about the market. Uh, so somewhere here, about how these are private firms, you know, and the well, sorry for the handwriting, and the, about the profit. motive don't go crazy on it just just mention it and then later on you can say okay and yeah their their main their sole goal is to maximize profit uh and that comes when mc is equals to mr uh but incidentally mr here is basically your price level because of that this point is a marginal cost pricing and hence you are allocatively efficient even though you you might not give like two hoots about it but बस हो जाता है ऐसे देन यू कैन टॉक अबाउट केसेस वेयर दे आर नॉट एफिशिएंट व्हिच इज बेसिकली ऑल ऑफ योर मार्केट फेलियर एंड अदर स्टफ अम सो या सो माय एक्शनलिटीज एंड सब कुछ अह 
Uh, okay, uh, and be careful to li- keep linking it to a type of efficiency. So with market failure, most of the stuff, in fact, I think all of the stuff apart from how mon- a monopoly, apart from how a monopoly might not produce at its minimum AC, all of the other stuff mainly is going to be linking to allocated efficiency. So keep linking it back. Don't just tell us if they're bad, tell us they're inefficient. Uh, slight difference. Excuse so any spelling. Like if you list down everything, um, so you have your you have your market failure. So a small plan for us. Market failure. Ki apne components hote hain jo hum well we 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 hum likh lenge. So list down karne ki zarurat nahi hai. Then you have you have macroeconomic instability. Uh, you know because no one gives a rat's ass about well policies and stabilization policies um so you could have inflation and stuff like that uh what else do you have here so, so uh market failure may have you talked about externalities and yeah merit, demerit, yeah uh, yeah basically so like information ka ho sakta hai yeah information failure bhi kuch hota tha na ha information failure hai we can also talk about income uh, inequality but like too kafi zyada far fetch ho jata hai if we thoda bahut time hote hai like we can just man hmm, hmm. and i'm not, i'm not sure i'm again i'm not too sure how income inequality links to efficiency it it's bad but is it necessarily inefficient yeah so that we have to be a little careful there okay so let's go on um market failure the first thing we can talk about you know like so no public goods and again you don't need to explain ki bhai itne depth ne ab aise mein nahi baithe ho just tell us ke public goods are those goods that are non rival and they're non excludable you don't need to go into give depths of that wo bata do and bolo you know well they do have benefits for society you know it's an important they are important services but the private sector does not provide them because of the free rider problem and why does the free rider problem exist because they're non excludable hence there is not just an under allocation but like zero allocation of this so in terms of allocative efficiency you fail so uh, basically that's the idea so yeah so you write free rider on a, how the private sector doesn't provide them and by the time until until i'm writing this sharia will just quickly revise what non excludable non rival is even though we don't need to write it in this question but good to know it acha so non excludability is when you matlab you can't exclude someone uh, like for example if you charge a price you basically exclude people from consumer certain part of non excludability is when you can't uh, the benefits of you consuming nahi hota rivalry hota excludability is when like ha you can't just exclude someone from consuming a certain product after charging a certain price okay so koi price hoti nahi hai so there is no excludability rivalry is when your consuming of a certain products means that the benefit that someone else would get is minimized basically and excludability ka idea is very important because obviously the idea is if if i can't exclude you from consumption then even if i put a price up why would you pay it which links to the free rider problem and since there are free riders it links to how you can't put a price which links to how you know not allocated by the by, by private sector which is problematic and on the grounds of allocative if and this is basically a, a case of allocative inefficiency okay um should we well no, not not this so so second we will basically talk about externalities where we bring in merit and demerit goods again here you really have to use your discretion with regards to time i mean we could write five six different points here in the video but like i don't think you necessarily have to which is why it's a good thing this is added towards the end so basically you write as much leave five seven minutes odd for your conclusion and this wherever whenever time ends you just utna jitna likh sakte likh lo um externalities you basically very short explanation on uh, on externalities when your social costs or social benefits basically deviate from private costs and benefits 
और benefits you know to third parties uh, to the third party for which uh, you know no appropriate co- compensation or payment is made uh, and which is where well you you could just link merit and demerit as we go along um merit, basically so merit goods are those that have ex- positive externalities demerit goods are those that have negative externalities substantial amounts of such externalities at least um then what's important is to point out how the market again keep linking it back to the question so the the market only cares about this but in in order to be allocatively in efficient in order to do so you have to care about this that's and that results in uh, externalities and hence under an over allocation so you can draw the diagrams of merit and demerit goods mm, right so for merit goods here you have costs and benefits um you have quantity here on the x axis so yeah, you have the upward sloping um mpc so marginal marginal propensity to consume your marginal private cost basically so and w- the economic assumption you make while making this is that there are negligible or no uh, negative externalities realistically phir bhi hongi negative externalities almost har cheez mein ho jati hain um like jo bhi product produce kar rahe ho kahin dhuan chala gaya kuch na kuch hoga but you assume they are negligible so such that your marginal private cost is equal to your marginal social cost for merit goods you are like ha negative externality that thing koi badi baat nahi hai for then you make your downward sloping marginal private um let's say benefit and you show how the marginal social benefit is higher uh well where it let me let me draw the sort of size here. and now the, here is interesting so different people do it differently you can show how the marginal social benefit is just a parallel shift upwards you could show how positive externalities cu- uh, accumulate uh, how they accumulative and that's why it's diverging like whatever you want to basically that doesn't matter that much so yeah um let me just draw so either aapke you are producing this is where the let, let's say the market is producing uh, but this is basically where you know society wants you to produce where you're allocatively efficient and because of that this particular amount well is it this amount or is it that amount ha it m jo tumne banaya uske upar bilkul sahi hai that is what uh, externality hoti hai jo dusra hai that is the subsidy at that jo bhi hota hai yeah and if you've taken the easier diagram and just drawn a parallel shift to jether bhi the bana do same cheez hogi this is a positive there's a positive externality and this particular area is potential welfare uh, or societal benefit that you haven't um, made use of so you can just call that loss because um, you know if you're wasting potential benefit that's also in a way a loss um so kind of similar thing for demerit goods for demerit goods you assume that the marginal private benefit and the marginal social benefit are the are the same which is basically is like saying there are no positive externalities you have your mpc you have your msc which is higher uh, so basically you this is where society wants you to consume because social benefit and social cost uh, this is where however the market is making you consume which links to which sorry leads to uh, this is basically your per unit um negative externality and this is welfare loss to society and because here you're under allocating so there is under allocation 
here there's over allocation with you know that's the horizontal distance between s and m uh, and that's how you're allocatively inefficient so you've covered ex G? two things like i would draw for production externalities and consumption both cases mein. that's what i was taught now yeah. Ek cheez hai. Cheez hai, i would just make this link because they are produced less Isliye they are charged more in, in terms of merit goods and hence that leads to uh, overpricing and underconsumption of merit goods. Demerit goods ka opposite case mein, because they are consumed more, ya, because they are allocated more, tune bataya jise. So hence they are charged less and they are consumed more. A link there and I would draw two diagrams like dono ki do do. Wouldn't take that much time but may, would make my answer just better. Okay, so I agree with how demerit goods are overconsumed and hence undercharged. With merit goods, the issue is that it's not always true that their price is higher because at times their under allocation is due to lack of demand because of information failure. Um, so I think, well, you will have to just clarify that. Um, Dusra, what you said about, you know, uh, production. So you're talking about the types of externalities, production on production, production on consumption and stuff like that. Uh -huh. The idea is simple that you have to MPC or MSC ko constant. Rakhe na. You could keep benefit constant and change costs. In that case, mein your cost would, social cost would be greater than your private costs. Well, I, well, yes, that, that, those are completely fine, perfect diagrams. But I would say that yaar, externalities, which you have marks, this is particular question. Mein, I think you will get it because we Externalities we dikha di, merit and demerit ki diagram bhi bana di. I think more than that would just be uh, the exam wise, time wise, I, 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 I mean, I wouldn't make it like I would just move on to the so many other um, things we have to, we have that we can talk about and we can cover. Say it's okay. Makes sense. Say it. So your, then your, your last. Um, component of market failure in particular, uh, which is basically uh, monopolization of such markets. So, because they're just markets, right? Uh, you don't have governments intervening and so on and so forth. Uh, there could be accumulation of market power, maybe through mergers, maybe through dirty tactics like predatory pricing, whatever. Uh, don't really care that much about that. But the idea is, uh, once that does happen, then two things could happen. You could show how these, how monopolies could be allocatively inefficient and productively inefficient. Uh, basically using the diagram that I accidentally made earlier on. So you have price. I mean, obviously you have, a few, you just have a few lines talking about, you oh know, what a monopoly basically means in context to your modern day economy. So, concentration of market power uh, and and hence a lack of competition or at least reduction of competition due to whatever uh, reasons. Uh, so price, quantity, you draw your demand curve, AR, it should be towards us, towards us steep because inelastic hota and normally into demand curve. You have your MR, say so you would have MC, well, not like that. Uh, yeah, like something like that. And again, the monopoly would basically want to um, produce till MC is equal to MR, which is here. It finds its quantity from there and then finds its price from the demand curve. And uska jo average cost, hota hai, let's say, average cost uska is the se. Uh, yeah. So you have to do the show two things in this diagram, which is why I recommend you draw a little large um, to show it's productively inefficient. The point where AC is minimum, well, maybe not the way I've drawn it, but normally AC is supposed to be minimum where it, it cuts MC. So this is the point of minimum AC where you're productively efficient. You're not producing that and hence you are productively inefficient. Uh, this is the point here, like this would be the price level, price and output level. If you were uh, producing where, if you were basically marginal cost pricing, you aren't doing so. And 
so you are uh, allocatively inefficient what's basically happening you are under allocating if you increased allocation well it, it would help in this case it would even help with your productive efficiency but definitely it will help you get closer to the point of allocative efficiency you get closer to the point of marginal cost pricing that doesn't happen here um, anything to add to this net weight loss uh, i just shared that area as well okay so uh, uh diagram's gotten a little messy but idea is dead weight loss would be correct me if i'm wrong this try the yeah the idea here is because instead of producing here you're producing here uh so this is basically the loss to society it's not picked up by either consumer or producer surplus kisi ka fayda nahi hua uh and definitely you can shade and label that as well that's not how you spell dead as dead weight loss which is lost to society and hence also helps show how it's how you're not allocatively efficient um so we basically done with the four things about market failure you can add a few more again depending on time so you could talk about macroeconomic instability and the idea here is because there's no overall um body or any sort of regulation that's actually trying to reduce the swings of the business cycle it's just a consumeristic society uh because of that you could have large swings you wouldn't have um let's say fiscal and monetary stabilization policies if it's a purely market system so you have those issues it's not a very long point um, sharia anything else to add to this point is wale mein nahi okay um do you want to write the last one ha information failure if you can like i've seen these these questions pehle usme generally they're talking uh, more about is me information failure ka rather than macroeconomic games or instability or yada so i would put it about there okay so can you explain information failure acha so like it can be defined as something ke either consumers and mostly consumers but because of the considerable market powers that, uh, that firm uh, have the uh, consumers either do not know the actual benefits or the uh, harms of consumer certain product or what the actual price should have been yeah yeah stuff like persuasive advertisement wagera which would cause a consumer to consume a certain product more than he, what he should have had and this is due to information failure generally which results in allocative inefficiency overall in economy because resources are more employed where they shouldn't have been okay and you can uh, make a one line link to stuff from even merit and demerit goods here at times because consumers demand uh, because consumers consume demerit goods so much is because they're unaware of their uh, harms and, and other times you have people in pakistan who still smoke no matter what um, and at times they they don't demand stuff like education and healthcare because they're unaware of their benefits um, so because of advertising so basically idea here is where where consumers aren't behaving that rationally right okay okay so you have a lot of stuff to write uh an important thing here is the conclusion so discuss and okay so you have to see the opinion itself um the opinion is that markets well it's a lot but it, the crux of it is that since markets only serve uh, self interest they are never efficient this is a pretty matlab kafi lambi chhodi hai boy ne um khair so say so what should we write as a conclusion uh like it depends upon the extent of the role of government and market ka apna kitna role hai so like if there is a uh, good role of government we can talk about subsidies and thoda bahut taxes or ye sab ke how government will actually help in allocation of resources better but then i would also add a bit like ki kis tarah government failure bhi ho sakta hai automatically and agar market ke paas zyada power matlab market mechanism zyada strong hai to phir that might lead to 
allocative inefficiency, but productively more efficient. Okay. So I would first start off with you know it depends on what type of market, uh, the nature of the market in question. So if it's like if you have perfect competition, then self-interest might actually help you achieve, help you become more efficient. However, if there are cases of market failure, then maybe not not so. Maybe their self-interest impact is a cause of inefficiency. Within cases, within those cases of market failure, it then depends on how pure or not how pure, but the degree of government intervention there. So, and you could talk about cases where, let's say, well, let's rub this a bit. So, if there is market failure, then it be then an interesting factor here is the degree of government intervention. Obviously, there won't be any government intervention in like a perfect competition. Uh, so, a degree of government intervention and and the nature of it. So, you could talk about how it helps, with you know, in regards to subsidies, uh, uh, with regards to regulating monopolies. It could still be a market. It is still a market, but the government helps the market become more efficient. So, at the end of the day, the market is still efficient. Um, and you could write us a little bit about that. But keep looking at how to you get. You, it makes it more uh, efficient. So, like if you're subsidizing merit goods, then you're getting to that po point of MSD is equals to uh, MSC, and that is allocative efficiency. If you're regulating monopolies and hence increasing competition. Uh, then it ensures that they have to lower price and hence increase output, thus moving towards the point of of marginal cost pricing, and is moving closer to it and hence becoming more allocatively efficient. Um, but an, an important thing here is that like if government can help you become more allocatively efficient, it can also lead to productive inefficiency because ex extra cost is available. Oh, sorry. So yeah. But yeah, it can also help you become more productively efficient because the idea here is like, for example, if it's giving you subsidies that normally encourages output. So in cases where you're, uh, let's say, just in the case of a monopoly, as we saw, you're under, you're employing, you're producing less than you should be, both both from the, from the, kya kehte hai? Uh, from the allocated efficiency perspective and the productive efficiency case perspective, if you if a monopoly produces more, either because of subsidies or because of uh, because competition forces it to reduce price and hence increase output, it will move down the slope of its average cost and hence be closer to its minimum AC. But so that that could all happen as well. An important he thing here is about that this could very well lead to what's known as the government failure because the idea here, whenever governments intervene, they have to juggle with efficiency. Excuse the, excuse the handwriting and equity fairness, basically. So, uh, the government's sure. So government like macroeconomic policies, for example, Technically, could help with efficiency by helping ensure help ensure, helping ensure macroeconomic stability. But if those policies are mainly geared to, let's say, provide unemployment benefits and hence promote equity, that could be inflationary in nature, even when you don't want it to be, uh, and stuff of that sort. So, because of that, in order to promote equity, what happens then is if they're unsuccessful in a, in this juggling act. Uh, that could lead to government failure where markets become more inefficient than they were without the government in the first place. So all we would have And the reason for that is because again, their main goal wouldn't, wouldn't be efficiency. They, it, they would be, it would be some degree of efficiency with some degree of equity. So government intervention could very well help with the provision of public goods. It could help with, uh, subsidizing and direct provision of merit goods, taxing and banning demerit goods, uh, st stabilization policies, compared, uh, you know, anti, uh, like, well, what do you what do you call it? So basically, legislation to control and regulate monopolies. Uh, however, what is important to note that when you do try to control and regulate monopolies and go for 
encouraging SMEs, encouraging small and medium enterprises. Uh, the monopoly could have been producing at a lower AC than those enterprises ever could because, because the monopoly has uh, more significant economies of scale. Like it just has a larger slope. So even if it's not at minimum AC, it could still be at producing, at producing at a lower average cost. So again, in, in because in its, in its desire to promote equity and provide, un, provide employment to people from scattered areas and promote small businesses, it might as it might not necessarily be the most efficient thing to do because those small businesses could might not be as efficient as a larger one could be. So yeah, uh, so let's check, see how we did. Let's check out the marking scheme uh, with its limited usefulness, but explanation of the meaning of efficient allocation and uh, the explanation of the analysis, which ensures an efficient optimum may be reached. So we did do that. Good scene. Distinction between productive and allocative efficiency. Discussion of reasons for market failure and necessity desirability of government intervention to achieve efficiency. Okay. So we did talk about that mainly in our conclusion though. Um, this could be by a persuasion nudge theory rather than by an enforcement. Uh, okay. So nudge theory originally an ethical idea, not a government manipulative tool involves designing choices to encourage decision, decision making in a wider positive, making in wider positive interests of society, but it can be used in government context. Conclusion about efficacy of relying on market system. So, well, well let's, let's check out the exam report before we comment. Uh, exam report normally same here. Uh, answered by many candidates with clear explanations and with a good structure to their answers. Uh, Sahi, then there's just written marking scheme stuff. Okay, so yes, this is a, uh, they have talked about direct intervention through fiscal and monetary policy. Um, so like, which links to the point we were talking about, about macroeconomic stability or rather instability. Um, okay. So if we try to go back to our answers, I think one thing that we could have done is have a little more comparative, maybe earlier on a lot of stuff we talked about in the conclusion with regards to governments, we could have had a little comparison earlier on, kept linking it to, okay, this is the market. What is the alternative? The alternative is government intervention. So a lot of stuff we talked about at the end, we could have maybe talked about it in, up front and then would have made a nice, what would have made a nice conclusion is when you conclude with talking about when I was making this point here about how, you know, they have to juggle efficiency and equity. I could have just further linked that and talking about how at times they don't have to be very interventionist because when you are very interventionist, like when you're having really strong fiscal policies, well, those could backfire, especially if you're looking at equity and maybe spending a lot uh, on unemployment benefits and overheating the economy. So those policies, those interventionist policies could have lead to government failure. So you just extend the point I was making here, but, but, al but also talk about how government could try, the governments could try to influence the market or influence choice and consumer decision making through, through basically nudge, nudge theory. Now nudge theory suggests that there's positive dis, uh, reinforcement. So it's more suggestive. It's more like, it's more of, uh, let, let, let me give you an example. It's more of like distributing leaflets about the benefits for this economy. If, uh, if you pay tax rather than aapke ghar mein aapke bolne bro, tax, tax dikhao, ye wo, like, that's the kind of the kind of, uh, like the idea. So you could have just linked ex extended our conclusion to encompass that as well. And that would have given a really nice uh, tweak to your to your conclusion. But all in all, um, we did cover most of it, and I think we're good.